Greetings of peace and very warm welcome uh, to everyone for this Tuesday talk. And uh, my name is Sarah, connecting from Cambridge. And today we have um, special guests, one from London, one from New York. So really looking forward to this opportunity. Um, just want to ask if uh, you're interested, happy to come into camera. It might create a feeling of being together in discussion on this. You're very welcome to type your questions in the chat. We'd love to hear your um, your comments and your experiences, any questions that we can share with the group. And this is being translated into Spanish. And um, we can um, also get the recording on YouTube. So the subject, how to create your own luck. I suppose the question is, what are the rules? Um, and um, are we just to believe it's possible? Um, a couple of quotes. This is by Roman philosopher and statesman um, Seneca. And um, he mentioned luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity, which appears quite a convincing description. But there are many ideas, and this Irish proverb has a slightly different angle. There is no luck except where there is discipline. <laughs> so it would be interesting to hear um, what comes up. Uh, we are going to be joined, and I'll hand over shortly to our guests. Uh, we have Sikran, who's, um, I'm not going to try and pronounce your surname, I should have practiced it before, <laughs> but she's originally from Iceland and brought up there also, been following a meditation path since 2008, currently based in London, and she's involved with many activities. The Brahma Kumaris there, and uh, she's experiencing a huge um, 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 positive change in her life. She's also a mother of three grown-up children. And from New York, um, we're joined by Eric Larson, and he is a director, one of the directors of the Brahma Kumaris in the US. Um, also represents the organization at the United Nations and a member of the NGO Committee on the Freedom of Religion or Belief. And he's also a retired civil engineer. So this is going to be, um, I think, an auspicious discussion if we uh, can take some jewels and also share our insights. So I'm going to first um, welcome Sigrun, and you want to share maybe your, your response on this, and then after that, we'll come to Eric and then, then engage in some discussion. So warm welcome. Hi to Sigrun. Good evening. Hi, my surname is Easy. It's Stefan. And so daughter, daughter of Stefan. <laughs> Ah, all, I put all, all, all women in Iceland have daughter in the end of the surname, and all men have son in the end of the surname. So, <laughs> but uh, thank you, thank you for inviting me, and it's nice to be with you here this evening. Uh, yeah, how to create your own luck, and I looked at it in the Oxford Dictionary, and. Uh, in the dictionary say it's good things that happen to you by chance not because of your own effort or ability so it's a completely different from the topic but uh, that is not my take on it i just felt like it was uh, interesting to to how how this uh, described and this word come from it's like a, a deutsch word come from uh, good luck and means happiness or good fortune in, in, in German. So uh, you can say, yeah, how to create your fortune or how, create, how to create your happiness. But we use this word a lot in our language. You know, we wish people luck. A lot of people believe that they can create luck by doing some things or by even wearing rings or wearing bra some kind of bracelets, some kind of armlets, or, you know, all kinds of things. The people carry all kinds of stones to, to create their luck. 
So there's a strong belief in many societies that we are able to create our luck. And I say it's, uh, of course, I say we are able to create our fortune and we are able to create our future. And uh, my take on it is uh, it's uh, mostly through our thoughts and actions, how we, how we think. And when I was reflecting on this, uh, a lot of things came into my mind. And sometimes what we uh, experience something to be very bad turns later on into be very good. So I just want to share one experience that I had many years ago. Uh, at the time, I was in I was in debt, financial debt, and I had a severe car accident. Uh, it was mainly severe for the other car because the person in the other car was not in in the belt and came out on out of the front uh, window and and went over our car and, and ended on the street. And, you know, I broke my arm, uh, my arm was broken. And of course I, I considered, considered it to be bad luck. But later on, I got a good amount of money from the insur insurance company and uh, I could get out of debt. And uh, it's changed my life a lot. So, and this person I had car accident with became my friend because we got to know each other at this time. So what was at that time bad luck turned into a good luck later on. And I heard this sentence lately, the big picture is always beautiful. You know, when we look at the small picture, it can look like it's not good, but uh, it can be very, very, very much luck later on when you know a lot of people experience to go through hard things and they learn something good from that but i say our mind is our uh, magic one you know we can do magic with our mind and uh, as usually you say you should treat others the way you want them to treat you but when I was reflecting on this today, I thought, no, you should uh, you should treat other the way no, you should treat yourself the way you want others to treat you. Uh, I think our luck comes a lot from how we look at ourselves. What I feel like I deserve. Do I feel like I deserve the best job? Do I feel like I deserve all the goodness in the world? Do I feel like that I'm capable of doing things? So if I treat myself the way I want others to treat me, and if I talk to myself, my inner talk, we are always talking to ourselves uh, almost constantly, and if I talk with myself with respect and treat myself nicely that creates a, a big fortune or a lot of luck and uh, of course uh, i started to meditate 2008 and i can say that this is probably my biggest luck that i came across brahma kumaris and learned to meditate and my life changed a lot. Sarah mentioned I had the three children at the time when I came, or I came to Brahma Kumaris. I was living with three teenager, and I remember when I had been doing this for a few years, maybe four years. My son said, "Mom, it's like after you started meditating, nothing goes wrong anymore." So you know, it's a uh, to 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 meditate you change you create different atmosphere in your uh, environment you're sending nice uplifting vibrations and that is what you get back so whatever you send out will come so by treating yourself 
thinking highly of yourself and think highly of others, see other people's virtues, that is uh, creating nice thing. So, yeah, I think it's, we could say it's a, it's a, we are creating our fortune and we are creating our future by thinking highly of ourselves and see other people's virtues and try to eliminate negative thoughts and wistful thoughts and be present and just enjoy, enjoy who you are and yeah, and, and respect yourself. I think that is a, yeah, there's many things. I, th I, I feel like another thing is simplicity, not just simplicity in your, in your environment, simplicity in desires the more the less desire you have uh, the more likelier it is that your dis huge desire you have will become true because your mind is not scattered all over it is focused on something one and if it's focused on something one it's very very likely that you can achieve that thank you for that um and it would be interesting to uh, reflect for each one of us the thing that we've noticed in our own lives when something which appeared unlucky appears fortunate. I can really relate to it myself and also feel lucky to have come across ideas which have created a lot of change in my own life to be able to, to turn see things a completely different way. Um, so and that aspect you mentioned that um, fortune um, is there when we shift our thinking. I think that's something we all have to experiment with um, to perhaps have the have the taste of it. But um, in this aspect of simplicity, uh, that's very interesting because ordinarily it might be um, one desire can create another, and it uh, we end up in a completely different place. But if we are perhaps more conscious about those things, it um, it at least helps us question and um, be more more clear about who we are, where we're going. So let's um, let's see what comes up for, for Eric and then we can kind of engage more on some of the on some of the aspects that come up. So welcome and I think good afternoon. So, yes, you're in the world of sound now. Okay. Welcome. So, this is Eric speaking. If you can hear me and things are well. All right, great. Um, I've been led to believe that there's going to be a chance for some conversation after uh, some of these. And my, my first thought for Sigrund is, because she was so lucky with that first accident, did she try for a second one to see if her, her luck is still good? And maybe uh, she'll reflect on, on why she didn't have a second one and why it might not have been so lucky, but a, a lovely story. And I'm glad things worked out um, in that case. And I'm also struck by a quotation and I appreciate the first two because they are quite insightful for me, um, but there's a, a professional golfer, uh, was retired now, uh, Gary Player is his name. He's from South Africa, if you know the game or the people. And he was asked one time about his playing and his response was a little variation on some of these. And he says, the more I practice, the luckier I get. And that kind of um, supports what Sigrun was saying about what we do and how we look at things and what our attitude is and how we might um, approach things. Um, and I, I do think very much that our mindset, our understanding um, is fundamental in um, the outcomes of our life. And if people call it lucky or not, um, wearing certain socks for certain events, you know, baseball players um, often will do that. They think it's their lucky, but that's kind of a, 
superstitious luck that might come out. And um, arbitrarily, some things happen uh, we can't control. But the luck that I think we're all focusing in on is, well, what can we influence in our life? How can we create good outcomes? How can things in our life um, be more to the side of beneficial for what we want? And along with Gary Player, the golfer, the more I practice, the luckier I get. The practice part is a process that I'm going to describe today as learning. The more we do something, the more we experience that, the more that um, we educate ourselves, the more that we become knowledgeful. And I think being lucky has to do with being knowledgeable about whatever it is that we get lucky at. Um, using the example of driving, cars were introduced. Um, I'm assuming I've also been in an accident and I was in a car that uh, hit another car a long time ago and I had my seatbelt on. This was before they had the shoulder straps, uh, just the belt. And I was in a car with somebody else who didn't. And he had the same experience as Sigrun described to the other driver uh, into the windshield. And so that experience, wouldn't call that any accident lucky, but that experience gave me some knowledge. That experience gave me a better perspective on speed of driving, condition of driving, things I could do for myself. And so I learned from that. I gained knowledge from that. Um, you don't have to have an accident. That's not the point of this uh, uh, our conversation. That if you have an accident, you're going to be better at anything. Please don't. But the idea that any event in our life, we can take some information, some knowledge from, and learn about that. And with that knowledge, that we become luckier. But it doesn't stop there because there's something that automatically follows through with that. That when we have knowledge about our driving, we learn seat belts are good, lights during the day are good, speed limits are good, a variety of things. And you can learn this just by reading and practicing. But then with that knowledge, our behavior changes. And a word that has come up um, about being lucky is being careful, being cautious, being aware that you know things can happen. And so we are lucky because we learn about the driving, the subject matter, and because we have that knowledge, we become luckier. I get the chance to go to a retreat center nearby New York City, up in the Catskill Mountains, if you know the area, about two hours north, and we, we have a variety of roads that we take. And I find that I'm very lucky in driving because I have knowledge of the road, because I have knowledge of the car, and because I know what can happen, I'm careful. And that being careful is therefore something that brings me luck. I'm not, oh, I have these things and I am arrogant about it, but because I have that knowledge, I am more sensitive, I'm more aware. And so therefore I get to where I'm going. I've been very lucky going up and down the highway and the road because in this case i have the knowledge and i'm careful and we had a class one time that there's another consequence that ties in a little with what sigrid said and maybe we'll be able to talk some more about this but if i am lucky if i've got knowledge about something and if i'm careful then i'm a little more relaxed easy and the word that was used was cheerful and if I'm cheerful, if I'm relaxed, then I'm going to be a little more sensitive what's going on. Um, the idea of what's in my mind is going to be focused. I'm going to be concentrating. I'm going to be present. I'll be engaged. And therefore, I will make the best decisions based on my experience and my understanding. And I'll be relaxed, nice and easy. 
I know that when I go up the hill on these things, if I accelerate, um, I'll be able to pass the cars and get out of the, the log jam that happens going up a hill. And I know when I see someone coming very fast, I just wanna get out of their way, let them go. I'm not in a competition. And so that easiness makes me light, makes me happy, makes me cheerful. So I get the knowledge, I apply that, I become lucky, I have that ability to therefore use the knowledge, I'm careful, and I become relaxed. And all of that then is kind of a, I guess, self-supporting process. The more I learn something, the more I use something, the more I can feel that there's a confidence in there, the more I can learn something else. And then in this sense, and we'll maybe talk some about that, the more I can make my luck. And I'm gonna say luck in this sense and put a modifier in front of that. Good luck, elevated luck, happy luck, positive luck, that those are a big part of what we have. And um, I find that based on what has been said by the variety of sources already, that one of the main things about luck is that it is within our control that we are able to be influenced uh, and influence treating ourselves the way we want to be treated and that we can therefore become powerful. That when we recognize some of these, um, I'm gonna call them not really rules, but I guess they're uh, postulates or there would be uh, ways of understanding the, the world, that we are able to use that and act in a way and get closer to what we want and how we want to be. And therefore, um, recognizing that we make our own luck, that we influence our own life um, is within our ability. And so I'm hoping within our ability, we have the opportunity to be lucky and converse some with each other. I find it, that um, there must be uh, some luck in my being here today. And so I appreciate the invitation. And so uh, we'll turn it back to you, Sarah, for maybe our next phase. Thank you so much. And um, it's interesting you, um, in a way, following on from Sigrun in that there appears to be a very rational, um, in a way, explanation and brought in knowledge so that that um, is the foundation. And I suppose it's a question um, we can ask Sigrun. Um, do you believe that it's entirely rational? And as Eric just said, it's in our control. If so, how would you um, explain to someone who perhaps they themselves, they feel they've done everything um, accurate in their life, they're treating everyone well, they're also treating themselves well, but things can happen to good people. And um, how can we explain it? Is it something that we need to understand another level in our lives? Does spirituality come in? Any any aspect uh, that you want to pick up on? Yeah, it, uh, thank you, Sarah, and, and thank you, Eric. And if I answer for the first question about if I can get into another car accident, it took me several years to realize the luck behind the, this accident that I. I, I experienced because I, I I had an operation and that took two years, but it wasn't until le later on that I realized that there was some kind of luck in this. You know, I totally agree that it's in our hands, but we, uh, because I mentioned the bigger picture, we we usually don't see the bigger picture. You know, I get sick. And it might be because I talked badly to my body many years ago, or I carry some fear within and, and are bombarding my inner system with fear without realizing and feeling I'm doing anything wrong. You know, we can be having uh, negative thoughts, even though I'm treating myself, I feel like I'm treating myself uh, thoroughly and I feel like I'm treating others but I can be having negative thoughts and that's a huge impact so if if I say I have done everything right 
uh, have a look at all the aspects of life, you know. I haven't met anyone that have done everything right in, in this life. But I wanted to mention uh, uh, how we create our fortune and what I have been, nay, our luck. I have been experimenting with traveling and luck. And, you know, I have really seen if I put a lot of good vibrations into my journey beforehand, you know, if I decide that everything is going to be good, I give, I, I'm, I'm booking the ticket in a, in a peaceful state and, and I go early to the airport, everything goes right. If I'm doing things in stress, I'm last minute, I'm packing last minute, something goes wrong. And I have experience because when I was in Iceland and when we were going to, to India, it was like usually at least four flights I had to take. Sometimes five flights to get, get to the headquarters of Brahma Kumaris. And I experienced to once going from India and everything, everything was perfect. I was sitting in the best seat all the way, got the nice service and everything nice. And then I have had other, other journeys where everything goes wrong. And when I look back, it's usually because I have been not having the right mindset before or while I'm creating the journey. And it's, you know, I, I really enjoy doing this to, to, to see how I created things, how I created my fortune or my misfortune. And we can usually we can go back and find did I how how was my state of mind when I went out of bed, you know, how was I feeling, and is that root of how I behave behave today if something goes wrong? So, so it is possible to to create 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 our luck in a way. It sounds like the you know getting out of bed the wrong side and everything follows from this <laughs> first thing in the morning. Yeah, it's interesting um, and your experiments and experience. One thought comes and maybe if Eric has something you'd like to pick up on on, on anything Sigrun said, or but one one question could be if someone uh, is born into a very unlucky situation, is that something? that can be explained also. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts because that um, often we, we feel that things are unfair and um, luck therefore is, is completely around chance. But, um, Do you want me to say something as what came into my mind? One of the senior teacher here said lately and it really, I really touched me. She said, uh, if you are born into a poor family, you don't know that you're poor until you can uh, uh, look at others that in another condition. You can feel like you're rich because you get a lot of love from your mom. It's not until we start to compare some comparison towards others. If everybody were on the same level, we wouldn't think that we are poor. And we could get a lot of love and a lot of uh, yeah, sustenance even though there are no money. So what is poverty? Is it money or is it love? But, but you know, karma philosophy is a deep aspect, but it is some kind of karma where we take birth. And, and, and in what kind of environment we are born, say, for example, where there's war, or are we born in an environment where there's a lot of peace or poverty or, you know, what, whatever. So, but I think we are maybe not going to focus much on karma phil philosophy. It's more like how we create our luck. So I think it's more luck if you are born into a lawful family and rich family in a way even though it seems like it's nice to have everything, you can buy everything, but uh, uh, money don't give you happiness. But, you know, it's not money 
you know, if, if everything else is lucky, lacking, then money don't give you happiness. But if you're born in a loveful family and a lot of money, that's nice. But you can be born where there's a lot of nice facilities, but not so caring and loving people around you. I think so. This may be more the point. It's a emotionally uh, functional or dysfunctional, which may be more important, which also touches on aspect. And you mentioned the deeper point. Um, so maybe let's hear from Eric and uh, anything that you'd like to share on uh, if someone in, in a predicament they're born into, which maybe could be emotionally challenging environment, is everybody in, in the same place? Can everyone create their own luck? Um, any thoughts you'd like to share? It's a, a challenging question because what it often um, brings up is some sort of a judgment on somebody else's circumstances. And uh, I think what Sigrun was saying is that um, the physical um, circumstances don't always translate into what somebody might be looking for, um, love, happiness, um, because I have great experience knowing people who would have whatever they would need um, in the material world and they're not happy. You know, they're just not pleasant people. I'm not categorizing everybody, but you can find people who are unpleasant, uh, unhappy, who have things and who don't have things. And I think that comparison um, mention, it, it was wonderful. But if you have love, you don't know what you are missing if you're missing anything, because you have basically what we would need and kind of wandering into an, another realm a little, um, the, the spiritual elements of ourselves are very important. And uh, I'm gonna say something that contradicts everything I said before, but we're very lucky if we're in a, an environment that's loving and peaceful and helpful. And um, that's what we might learn and kind of opens up a, a number of other topics. Going back to what Sigrun said about the response to the car accident, I thought it was very insightful what she said, is it didn't happen immediately. And it happened after a couple of years that she saw this in a different way. And so one of the qualities about feeling lucky that I would like to introduce is being patient. That when we have uh, an expectation about an event, you know, I want it to be now. I want it to be my way. I want, this is what it is. And if it's not that, then, you know, my bad luck or something else, you know, we can play with it in our mind and, and we can make ourselves um, feel unlucky because what we wanted, what we expected, what we desired didn't happen the way we thought it should. And so letting go of that, the ability to be patient, on whatever the circumstances are and therefore non-judgmental. Oh, this was bad or this was good. And that's why the situations of different people, different, um, trying to step away from those uh, because people can be unhappy um, with something or without and people can be happy with something or without. And so being patient, trying to be non-judgmental and watching our expectations um, are, are big parts to how we might want to, and I guess that's not been introduced or said clearly, but I'm assuming everybody wants a little bit of happiness or joy, uh, contentment, those things in their lives. And if you have it, you're going to see yourself as lucky. But if you start to recognize that if we are without expectations, if we are non judgmental, if we are patient, then we're going to free ourselves from the things that would take us away from those qualities that we might desire. And so that sense of being patient um, comes up very much for me because we have a number. I'm with the Brahma Kumaris here and have some teachers. And one of our seniors was saying that it's the expectation that it should be a certain way that causes the problem. Because how do you learn if you don't have some sort of challenges, how do you learn to make more effort to apply more of your power? You know, if something happens in a certain way, we might say, oh, it didn't turn out the way I wanted it. 
that maybe in that situation, you're able to learn that that wasn't the way to move forward. And now you're more educated, you have more information and you'll be more careful the next time you'll make better choices. And so it was very beneficial and you're lucky to have had that experience because now you know that's not the right thing to do the next time. And so we can be lucky when we become educated. Wisdom is um, not getting what you want. Um, wisdom, I'm not sure of the saying, but basically if you don't get what you want, you get experience. And so having experience is a, is a wonderful thing to have because that makes us wiser, that makes us grow, that makes us uh, better role models, that makes us um, more cheerful because we're comfortable. And therefore, if we don't get something, we get something else and we're lucky to get that too. Sigrun, anything you'd like to add on? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> It, it was nice what you said about patience because uh, uh, I usually say be careful what you wish for because uh, you can so easily wish for something and you get it but usually you don't get it in the way you wished for it <laughs> so so you know I can tell, tell a story of myself you know I was in a center where uh, you know in my hometown in the north of Iceland, uh, uh, there was a Brahmakumari center there, and there was a teacher there, and one student, and I was the only student, you know, and, and uh, nobody was, there were no other regular students, and I used to think, I want family, or I want more colleagues who are meditating, and I want some people to come. And I want to have some people with me. I want company. And and then later on, seven years later, the center was closed. And I ended up in London with huge amount of people who are meditating. But I had never seen it that way. I wanted people from Iceland to come and meditate with me. I was wishing for more people to join. And I ended up in London where there are up to 200 people coming on Sunday mornings. <laughs> so, so I never saw it that way. And sometimes we wish for something deeply. We get it, but it wrapped in a different paper than we expected. So uh, yeah, we have to be very careful what we are sending out, we might get it in a different way than we expected. So this about patience is, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it is patience and acceptance. Accept the luck you get, even though it's not exactly the way you expect it. Uh, you know, I'm not saying it's bad to be in London, but I never expected myself to, to end up in London. I had this desire to learn to speak uh, English uh, thoroughly, and my English has proved a lot since I came here. So there's a lot of things I have seen by, by uh, getting this opportunity to move to London, be in such a a busy environment when it comes to to uh, meditation you know uh, every day i'm around a lot of people who are doing the same things and love to do the same things at i so it's like many many things that have happened in my life since i came here are, are like dream come true so many of my old wishes have have been have have come true here and i think it's a uh, it is uh, like a great deal of gratitude to see how you created your situation because we are create creator of what, what the situation we are in now. And when you take your nice fortune and figure out how did I create this? Because it's our creation and then we appreciate what is going on in our life more. And yeah, this is one of the things I really enjoy, you know, see the threats, how I created the situation I'm in, whether it's situation that I don't like or situation that I like. And it's uh, very interesting to, to uh, uh, that's another uh, topic for another talk, to 
see the threats when you get angry. You know, there's always some threat you can trace back and see what is the root of this anger. So I like this point about <laughs> be patient. It comes, it comes, it that never comes on, on the time you really expect it, and it comes in different form than you expect it. I'm sure you have some thoughts on this. And uh, if um, at this point anyone would like to share the thoughts or questions, feel free to type. But, uh, yeah. Anything you'd like to pick up on? And is there an aspect of surrender in this patience? Do we have, is there an aspect of trust? What do you say? Is this a question? Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, and, 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 and life is a little bit like a game. You know, I've done it many times. I've put some desire into the cosmos or, or to God or to higher being and uh, see if it's happened. And it's so pleasing when it's happened. But I say it, then it's in, we need to have like a, um, usually it is a, like a desire for spiritual growth. If I if I have a conversation or, or send out some vibration about something that sustain me spiritually, and it's so yeah nice to see when it's turn uh, or come to truth. I can tell one short story about that. Uh, our senior teacher here in UK is Janti uh, Ben. I'm sure many of you know who Janti Ben is, and. First, when I when I had started to to meditate, I was in the north, and John Tibben came to Iceland. She was not having programs; she was just just uh, just coming for a meeting. And I really wanted to meet the senior teacher, but I had no uh, excuses to go there. So I had had this conversation with my God and said. If it's uh, spiritual beneficial for me, I really would like to go to the capital and see gentlemen. You know, I just said it, and 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 then I, you know, let go of it. Didn't think any think think about it. The day after, I got a phone call from the capital and said, "You have to come to have a meeting with the government because I was in, in some board. We will pay for the flight. Come tomorrow." And, you know, it just, you know, I had asked for it and I really wanted to meet this person, the spiritual person. And it, it was so wonderful when it happened. And it's like a magic, you know, if you put out your request and just let go. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Eric, do you have any experience like this? <laughs> yes. Um <laughs> Actually, a lot. Um, when I, you know, um, I like the word magic because magic is uh, something that you don't understand. And I don't always understand how things happen, but I believe in the process of that. And the one you described um, right now, Sigrun, was wonderful because something about the power of our attitude and the ability to say, if it's going to happen, you know, let me do what I can, but I don't control everything, but I do have the experience, and I hope everybody else does too, that there are other forces, other energies, other support um, in the world that can come to us when we are clear. And when we're clear um, on what we need, and allow that to be, you know, offered, you know, in our thoughts, you know, um, then help comes. And I, I do this <laughs> uh, regularly because uh, one of my opportunities, uh, daytime activities, is to uh, help others in um, bureaucracy. Okay, so whether it's immigration, whether it's filing income tax, whether it's uh, you know, government forms and things. Um, this is not something I've aspired to. 
It's not something that brings me uh, great joy uh, while I'm doing it and while I'm thinking about doing it. But I come to the process saying, well, you know, this is, I'll do my best. Let me see. I am um, consider myself at least of average intelligence, so I should be able to read the directions and figure it out. But oftentimes, I have no idea what they're actually asking. And so it's more the process of let me do what it is and let me, you know, offer this that my uh, pure desire is to help someone. And even though I might not know, a number of times the right person will help me out. I get an idea to request help. Uh, I'll find someone on the phone who can help me. And that there is this ability, and you might say, oh, it's lucky you got that person, or you're lucky that this one was there to help you. That's true. But again, the luck is the energy that has been um, kind of requested and released by having the thoughts that it, this isn't what I want to do. I don't want to fill out this form because I will look good or I want to do this because of my desires. But it's kind of from a, a benevolent place. I want to help. This is what I can do. Um, and I need help to help. I need the luck. And so many times um, the situation has a positive outcome. Um, and it's not necessarily easy. It's not necessarily fun. It's not necessarily immediate. But having that other energy that comes with, um, patience is one. And patience sometimes is seen as a, a passive energy. But another way of looking at that is um, perseverance, to continue to you know, work on educating, learning, applying, reaching out, um, that that brings luck also. And so the ability to recognize that there are other forces, energies, uh, help um, in the world and allowing that to come um, is wonderful. I want to mention one of my favorite, um, haven't seen it in 20 years, I don't think, or whatever it is, but there was a book and a movie that came out as you were describing Sigrun. It's called Under the Tuscan Sun. And uh, what's wonderful about that is that there's this individual and they have all sorts of ideas and desires and hopes. Um, and as it goes through the story, none of it works out the way this individual desires or thought it would be. But when they step back at the end, they realize that all their desires were fulfilled in another way. They wanted family, well, you know, they got a different type of a family. They wanted a home, well, it's a different type of a home. They wanted this, they wanted that. And when they looked at it, they got it all, but it wasn't packaged the way they thought there were, they were supposed to be. And so with the expectations and with that, uh, they could have been, in, been unhappy. But as you did, Sigrun, the ability to take some time and look back and understand the benefit in something, um, I think that's a very important process. Um, might not be totally connected to luck, but to appreciate whatever it is that we've got. To have that sense that, you know, look at what I've got, how lucky I've been. And holding that awareness and that mindset um, is, is very valuable. I like to um, put people into groups. There's a line between the groups. And you're going to be in one side or the other in this. And do you see the world as wonderful? Everything is wonderful? Or do you see it on the other side that there's nothing that's wonderful? Do you feel yourself with enthusiasm? Oh my gosh, look at those clouds. Oh my gosh, I'm still breathing. Oh my. Do you live in the world of wonder? Or is it like, oh yeah, those are clouds. Oh yeah, I expect to be alive or not. And so I think living in the world of being lucky seeing ourselves with all the, the blessings we've got is a pretty good way to go through things. And so I consider myself today to be lucky to be here, to be with you, and to be able to think about this topic. Thanks.
beautifully put. It um, feels like the basic premise is not taking anything for granted, that this is a gift and um, this experience and we don't know what will happen next. So it, it leaves room for um, that appreciation. And also the expression, when the student is ready, the teacher appears, came to my mind when you when you were talking that, uh, I don't know where it comes from, if it's Kung Fu or, <laughs> or <laughs> that movie. But, uh, yeah, anything anything Sigrun would like to add on, on this? I, at least I think I'm on the beautiful side of the world. <laughs> I was just thinking about just before we had this talk, I was planting some flower in front of the center because there's a big celebration co coming starting on Thursday. And somebody, one brother or one, one of my friends came, call it brother, and, and I said, stop, look at the plants, see the flowers. And he said, yeah, this is not my cup of tea. So, so something that I feel like is beautiful and others don't even notice it. We are so different. But I really, it's it's about yeah, seeing the glass as a half full or half empty. And uh, my when you were describing Eric about your work, the, it's the intention behind what we do. What intention do I have? Do I want to be seen or appreciated? Or do I want to help people? Do I want other people's life to be easy, nice and good? And if the intention is pure and clear and, and, and positive, everything works out nicely. So definitely we can create our own luck for sure. I think that's the outcome of this uh, conversation this evening. <laughs> Don't you agree? Someone wrote in the chat that uh, agreeing we create our own luck and things will be better than expected. And is that something you found where, you, you know, in the past I was always wanting to engineer things and had a sort of five year plan, 10 year plan. And it, it, it you know, I think there's that saying if you want to make God laugh, tell him about your plans. So I can relate to that. But the things which I have wished for have come exactly as you've both said in a different form. But um, it, you need to um, have that perspective and reflection. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> yeah, if, if I just come, uh, I comp, uh, you know, uh, comment on this, I think the the... Know, the easy way of life is to go with the flow and, and appreciate what comes, you know, in every situation. I have this planning intellect and, and I, I tend to stress myself uh, because I have to do this and do this. But the more I let go, the more I trust, the more I have faith, the more easier everything comes. And I was just a little bit practicing this before this talk I decided not to prepare myself a lot you know just be relaxed and and make sure that it would just go with the flow and it's much easier than put a lot of tension into what you're going to do of course it's nice to prepare but 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 it, without any stress and any expectation just what comes comes you know and, and I think that uh, that is with every aspect in life. If you just accept exactly what is in front of you, then life is easier. And see it with this glasses of that the bigger pic the big picture is beautiful. I think it's very important to have a, a, a plan so you know what you're deviating from, okay? where, where you might be uh, moving out. And I, I totally plan everything. Uh, and if I don't write it down, um, it doesn't exist. And so it's very important for me to have my to-do list, have uh, what's gonna happen this week, things into the future, because um, otherwise I would forget. But I'm not so rigid that it has to be a certain way. And one of the things that I, I believe in um, is that having a schedule, um, you need to, put in flexibility. 
you need to put in some time to relax or adjust or you know move around. Um, nobody knows the exact path. I'm going back to this trip up to our retreat center, nobody knows the exact path they're going to take. But if you're present, you'll know when to move and when to adjust and when to slow down and when to speed up, when to take a break, and you get there. But you can't foresee it. You can't dictate that you're going to be in the right lane the whole time. Or So the flexibility, having a plan, but knowing that it's not um, fixed in stone, so to speak, is uh, very important for us to uh, continue our, our luck. I like that. And flexibility, sometimes things work out better than one can ever engineer, but you've also got the plan B or plan A. So there's a backup and perhaps that helps in, as you're mentioning about being relaxed, you do what you do and then step back and see what happens. And uh, someone's commenting that expansion in the understanding about the connection with discipline and luck was helpful in understanding the hidden benefits of a practice of meditation. So on that note, um, time has flown very fast and um, maybe we could have a few minutes if Eric would like to, to guide. Um, I don't know if Sigrun, you had any final words you want to mention before we, we go into the meditation. Um, I just want to say this was a lovely topic and, and lovely to be with you and, and yeah I really enjoy it and, and a lot of uh, pressure, precious jewels that came from Eric so yes. and you too Sarah so thank you thank you and I would like to also support that thanks for the invitation thanks for the opportunity um, this is my lucky day <laughs> Phil, we are sharing that luck with you as well. So it becomes a blessing for everyone. All right. Before we go into the meditation, I will mention this because at the end it will be nice to hold the silence. Um, just to mention that in a couple of weeks we'll be joined by author Mike George and he will be examining the subject untangling religion from spirituality. So something uh, which will be um, fascinating to reflect on. And um, so let's um, let's create this time for this practice that underpins the that pure intention. So thank you so much um, to both of you and everyone here who's created this atmosphere and for all your sharings, also translation. So now let's um, let's go to Eric for for some reflection. Sure. So I like to uh, start fresh and take a deep breath. Suggest the same, center yourself. And from what, from what we've heard today, have that intention, have that thought or vision that you are lucky, that there are good things in your life, wonderful things miraculous things and allow your awareness to focus in on what you've learned, what you know, and what you're comfortable with. And bring in that quality of patience to this moment. And recognize that I have the intention to create a life filled with peace, love, community. And allow yourself to see that, and feel that, and know that there's an energy that supports that in the world. And the more that we're aware how we can influence our own experiences, how we want to be, the more that energy will support us, the more the world will try to help us. 
and see yourself and the world in this wonderful perspective. There's beautiful things all around. Whatever my circumstances, let me see it as a blessing. And let me know that I have the power or influence to guide my life in the direction that I want. When I have knowledge, I increase my luck. When I use that knowledge, I increase my luck. And when I recognize that my luck has increased, I become cheerful. So smile for a moment, inside and out. And may all your days be filled with good luck. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Thank you. Have a wonderful week and uh, appreciating bringing this awareness of what is extremely lucky and compounding it for the days coming. Thank you. See you next time. <laughs>